Good evening to all my wonderful viewers out there and welcome back to another top five video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my top five favorite pieces that I wore in December of 2023. Yeah, welcome back guys. I'm trying to catch up on all the content that I've missed filming throughout January. Uh, the main reason that I have missed out on filming most of the stuff during this month is because Man, it's been a really, really busy start to 2024. Um, as I kind of highlighted in some of the previous uploads, I've decided to kick off 2024 by taking the monumental step in buying my first unit, buying my first place. Because <laughs> um, I've been renting at home for the past couple years and I invested a large portion of my pay uh, and eventually sold off most of it in order to save up the house deposit for a, for a unit. And uh, basically all of January, I've been going through that process to work with the bank, real estate agents, lawyers, everything like that to get it sorted. And now, now that it's coming towards the end of January, we've got that sorted. Now I'm in the settlement period for 30 days where we get the thing sorted out on how much I have to pay, how much is left, is there any more legal implications of, you know, swapping hands with the property. It's, it sounds like February is going to be very hectic for me, but that doesn't mean that the fashion world is going to stop for me. I've still got stuff to cover. So I'm definitely going to be covering the spring 2024 lookbook for Palace very soon, but I've also got to go cover my top five favorite pieces from Supreme's last season of 2023. There's a lot of other collections and collaborations I want to cover recently. I'm just going to see what I can try and stay on top of, guys, but I'll try and catch up the best I can, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing exactly that. I'm going to be trying to catch up by doing my top five favorite pieces that I wore in December of 2023, the first month of summer, and... You could definitely feel it, although it was kind of bipolar in a way where there were days during the week that were, I wouldn't say cold, but not extremely warm. So I'll give it that. <laughs> so in that month, I tried to wear a couple of outwear pieces. Well, one outwear piece I'll say in particular for this video as much as I possibly could just to milk it because I knew I wasn't going to get the opportunity in January and I was absolutely right on that call. I have not been able to wear basically any layers in this month because it's just been so warm which is unfortunate but also a good test of my wardrobe because then it means I have to bring out all the rayon shirts that I've bought over 2023 so it actually worked out quite well but you also definitely see that uh, pop up in December as well in those hotter days for the first month of summer but I'll go over that when I talk about the pieces individually. As I always say, these pieces in these top five videos of the certain months are not in any hierarchy. It's just my top five favorite pieces that I wore in the month out of the various options that I have. <laughs> um, and don't worry, when I move into my new place, that's going to look a lot less crowded. I can definitely say that for sure. But uh, yeah, I'll talk about how I wore them, show how I wore them, what I like about them, etc, etc. Let's get into it. Let's start by talking about my fifth favorite piece that I wore in December of 2023. To kick it off, piece number five, I think is actually a piece that I wore in November as well. I've really, like, now that it's warmed up, I've really, really switched to it and I really enjoy it. What it is, is piece number five is the Stussy Poppy button-up shirt. One of the many rayon button-up shirts that I bought from Stussy in 2023. And honestly, I can't see that stopping anytime soon because I've fallen in love with these Stussy button-up shirts. They're fantastic. The prints are fun. The colors are awesome. The weight of them is fantastic for summer. The hottest part of this outfit is probably either going to be the wool kangle hat or the pants or leather boots. And it's actually really, I guess refreshing to have such a lightweight shirt. I'll have to look in 2024 for some options for linen pants and stuff like that in a waist size 40 because I feel like I could really nail summer looks in 2024 
by having linen pants and rayon shirts because then you've just got lightweight flowy things and I think that would work really well so if anyone has any recommendations let me know but I was wearing uh, this button-up shirt exactly how I kind of showcased it there I think the colors are fantastic it just gives that awesome pop of color it's so vibrant it's so in your face but I love it and I wore it heaps of times at heaps of social events in December of 2023 moving into Basically another shirt where I did the exact same thing as piece number five, but for piece number four, <laughs> I had, again, I think I did also wear this one in November, the Capital Navajo button-up shirt. This is a fantastic piece from Capital. I absolutely love it. The colors on it are beautiful. I think I've expressed multiple times that I want to pick up this piece in all the colors it comes in. It's just a that's a lot of money to spend on a lot of button-up shirts, but I'm very happy that I have one of the three colors it comes in. Uh, the rayon texture of this button-up shirt is a lot different from, I would say, traditional rayon. I don't know if rayon or very lightweight shirts in the 20th century had that kind of texture, and that's what Capital is replicating, because a lot of times with Capital's material choices and design choices, they're pulling from heritage silhouette and material uses and things like that. But it has such a... It's a very soft fabric, but it has this kind of like grainy texture to it. I, I, there's, there's nothing I can really compare it to. This is such a unique, interesting button-up shirt. The only critique I have of it is it's probably a little bit too long um, for... Well, I'd much rather if it was a little bit wider and not as long, but the fit of it is fine on my body. If I could change the proportions, though, I'd make it, yeah, a little bit wider and not as long. But that's quite typical of a lot of Japanese button-up shirts to be quite overly long, so I can see why that design choice has been chosen by Capital as a Japanese brand, of course, but love it. It's a fantastic piece. Um, on a day where it is just too hot to wear just a simple black shirt, that thing comes out. And I'll either wear it over the top of a tank top just to break it up a bit, or just as I showcased in this video as a singular piece. And I was wearing it a lot of, at a lot of social occasions when I've gone out drinking with friends, things like that. It's a fantastic piece and I had to mention it as piece number four. For piece number three, this is the piece that I was kind of talking about where I was milking it as much as possible. <laughs> and it is the Undercover by Jun Takahashi Pink Floyd Animals Jacket, uh, the Spring Summer 2023 one. Um, in saying that, there isn't another one, so it's only going to be that one, but anyway. Uh, the piece is fantastic. It's a cotton jacket, very sturdy, no inner lining to it though, so not super warm, which is one of the reasons why I was able to wear it a lot in those colder days in December. But also, I bought it quite recently in 2023, like towards the end of the year, and I really wanted to milk that as much as possible. So I was trying to wear it as much as I could, but it's unfortunate because I've bought all these fantastic undercover pieces towards the end of 2023, but I'm going to have to hold out until like mid-2024 to be actually able to wear them consistently. Yeah, it's an unfortunate circumstance, but I was trying to wear it as much as possible. I find this piece uh, the best to wear over the top of a tank top, or um, if I have to wear it to work, I'd wear it over the top of it like just a white Oxford button-up shirt with a black tie. But I think my preference would be over the tank top, all things considered with, you know, summer being summer. And I did wear it out to some social events just over the top of a tank top and it worked really well like that. So uh, I definitely had to give it a shout out as piece number three in this video today. This piece, I think I mentioned in the November video as well, but I really feel like it needs to have a shout out because it's a piece that I really pushed myself to wear and really enjoy wearing now. Um, although I haven't actually worn it too much in January. It was definitely a November December thing, but what I'm going to be talking about is the Kangol Beret that I picked up from Culture Kings when I did my various haul of Kangol hats. Uh, I love this hat. 
Um, initially, I was very unsure on how to wear it. I kind of left it in a omnidirectional way and it kind of just sat on the top of my head. But now when I wear it, I kind of give it direction most of the time facing my dominant hand, which is my right hand. So I have it facing to the right and I actually really enjoy how it looks once you give the beret a direction. I think it looks really nice. Uh, I've been wearing this a lot in uh, November and December as a replacement for my wool cap because as much as I love my Kangol wool uh, 503, 504, 504, my wool 504 cap, um, I wanted to try something a little bit different and this Kangol beret definitely satisfied that. So I had to give it a shout out in the December video as well for piece number two. Moving into piece number one, we had to go with the piece that I wore comfortably over the top of my oversized Uniqlo shirts. Uh, I wore this one to work a lot when I just wanted to add something with a collar to it, but didn't want to wear something that was super restrictive and was going to make me super, I guess, uncomfortable and uh, overheated in, in, in that December period when it's getting really hot. Uh, what I wore was the JW Anderson Uniqlo chambray shirt. This is the oversized one with the oversized sleeves, um, the excessive white stitching, and um, there's not really uh, any other factors I can kind of add to it, I suppose, besides its lovely, you know, chambray blue color to it. Uh, it's a fantastic lightweight overshirt to wear. Uh, I don't really wear it as kind of like a shirt by itself. I definitely wear it as a overshirt. But like I said, I think it's just a nice little shirt that I can kind of throw on over the top just to add a collar to my outfit, just to make it feel a little bit more office friendly, but also quite laid back at the same time, but not as laid back as the perception of just a normal t-shirt is still adding a little bit of, I guess, sensibility to it as well. <laughs> but it was my excuse to basically get away with wearing a, a collared shirt while also not wearing an Oxford shirt. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, I really love it. Wore it all the time in December. It didn't make much of a reappearance in January though. Um, so you might not see it appear in my first video for 2024 uh, for this top five series, but that is all five of the pieces that I wanted to discuss and wore and loved from my wardrobe in December of 2023. The list was very, very similar to November of 23. Uh, I hope that at least with January, it changes up a little bit. And I think, yeah, I think there's definitely some pieces I wore that were different to December and November. So you should see some different pieces then. But yeah, really love these pieces, wearing them all the time. Uh, wear them in the very very much the same fashion, but that is because I have a very uniform dressing approach But I'd love to hear your guys thoughts on any of the pieces that I wore in this video Do you like any of them? Do you own any of them? Do you want any of them? Let me know anything you got to say about them down in that comment section below And yeah, that's all I really have to add about my top five favorite pieces from my wardrobe that I wore in December of 2023 guys January is probably going to have a lot of lightweight pieces in it just because it's really ramped up for the second month of summer. But I'll cover that in February and we'll have a discussion about that then. But I'd love to hear from you guys on what you were wearing in December of 23. What were your top five favorite pieces from your wardrobe? I can understand if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it's probably going to be a lot heavier pieces. You're probably going to have a lot more layering and it's going to be a lot more fun to play around with because... Yeah, definitely in summer, in the warmer months, you're restricted when it comes to that. You really have to focus on, I guess, like cuts, materials, etc, etc for your pieces. But let me know. Let me know what your top five favorite pieces for December of 23 were down in that comment section below. And of course, if you guys want me to keep covering my top five favorite pieces that I wore in specific months, you've just got to let me know by giving me the three indicators I always ask you guys for, which is a like on this video, a comment in that comment section down below. And if you haven't already, the best indicator you can give me is a subscribe to the channel. As I mentioned in previous uploads, we're trying to hit the subscriber milestone of 3,815 subscribers before the end of the month. We are very, very close to that milestone, guys. So hopefully, with your guys' continuous support, we'll be able to reach that milestone before the end of the month. 
But that's everything I got to say about my top five favorite pieces though, guys. So uh, until the next top five video, until the next drop list video, until the next streetwear talk video in general, I'll catch you later.